see in this presentation i am going to explain the calculation of gene and genotype frequency in a population see i have shown in this area so many individuals these round structures are representing individuals so it is a population it is an area where the individuals of a population are uh, found now these individuals are of three different types with respect to their genotype i have shown them as capital a a capital a small a and small a small a so uh, if you consider the genotype of uh, an individual uh, for a single gene locus then uh, you may find that that specific gene locus may be represented by two alleles like capital a and small a these are two alleles so due to presence of two alleles three different types of individuals will be possible for that specific locus and uh, these individuals will be capital aa their number is given here 230 then heterozygotes they are 190 and uh, homozygous recessive that is small a small a they are 80 in number so uh, we have to actually calculate the frequency of capital a allele and small a allele in this population method is quite simple uh, but uh, you should know how this calculation will be done suppose through certain methods the uh, genotype of uh, 500 individuals because total 500 individuals have been observed so through certain methods the genotype uh, of these individuals or maybe certain phenotype uh, may be representing uh, the genotype itself like in case of yemen blood group uh, if we uh, know the phenotype of individual we can accordingly know the genotype of such individuals so you could know actually the genotype of the individuals present in this population now if you observe a single individual then you observe actually two alleles because that specific individual will have two homologous chromosomes and both chromosome will have that specific locus where alleles will be located so if you observe 230 individuals having genotype capital aa it means it's just double number of alleles you have observed so 230 into 2 that is 460 alleles you have observed in those individuals in case of heterozygotes 190 alleles will be of capital a type and 190 will be of small a in case of uh, homozygous recessive small a small a uh, since such individuals are 18 number so total number of small a allele in this case will be 160 and if you have observed 500 cases then you have observed actually 1000 alleles so with this concept you can do the calculation now frequency of a may be represented by small p p and q are the frequencies of capital a and small a so frequency of capital a that is represented by small p and this can be known by doing this simple calculation that is 230 plus 230 this figure will be added twice because individuals are capital a capital a and then 190 will be added with this since uh, 190 will be capital a alleles so that will come and this total will be divided by 1000 so 500 into 2 that comes 1000 now the total of 230 plus 230 plus 190 this will be coming 650 divided by 1000 and the final value will be 0.65 it means frequency of p or a allele that is 0.65 so here itself you can know the frequency of small a because we know that p plus q 
will be equal to 1. So if the frequency of one allele is 0.65, the frequency of other allele will be 0.35 because 1 minus 0.65 will be equal to this value. But uh, you can adopt this method also that for knowing the frequency of a small a, you can uh, do this calculation 80 plus 80 plus 190. So here I have done this 80 plus 80 plus 190 divided by 1000 and this figure comes 0.35. So you have finally come to know that uh, in these individuals of 500 uh, uh, count or number, the frequency of A allele is 0.65 and uh, a small A allele is 0.35. Then uh, here as I told you, P plus Q is equal to 1. And if you expand it, means if you uh, have its binomial expansion, P plus Q, its square, then you will find the uh, expansion as P square plus 2PQ plus Q square, where this P square represents capital AA types. 2PQ, it will represent the heterozygotes. And Q square, it is representing the small AA types. Or you can say P square and Q square represent two homozygotes and 2PQ uh, represent heterozygotes. So this you should know and uh, same thing I have written here that is P square. Uh, it's, uh, it is representing frequency of capital AA, 2PQ that represents frequency of heterozygotes and Q square that represents frequency of small a, small a times in the present case. Now, as I just told you, this is simply the same calculation which I, which I just explained. What I want to show here that if uh, a population uh, has been analyzed specifically in the same um, manner, then uh, what you will be knowing, you will be knowing the number of these individuals Okay, it has come the number 230, 190, 80, you have just seen. So, uh, hardy windwork frequency will be P square, 2PQ and Q square. You will have to actually calculate the expected number. Expected number will be calculated based on the frequency of capital A and small a allele. And you know the frequency of capital A is 0.65, small a is 0.35. So, P square into the number of individuals observed that will give you expected number so here 0.65 into 0.65 because this figure is going to be squared into 500 and the value comes 211.25 so this value will be the expected number in the heterozygous case where the frequency of heterozygotes is being represented as 2pq the expected number will be obtained by multiplying it by total number of individuals observed so this will be 2 into 0.65 into 0.35 into actually this is 0.35 into 500 and then this figure comes 227.50 and in case of homozygous recessive means here small a small a whose frequency is being expressed as q square the expected number will be obtained by q square into n so this will be 0.35 into 0.35 into 500 that will be 61.25 and you should verify whether the observed number total and expected number total comes same or not if you find the total of expected numbers that also exactly comes same value uh, to its observed, then uh, your calculation is all right. So uh, when you have observed and expected both values, then you can test whether this uh, population is in equilibrium or not. Because you have to see whether the difference between this observation and expectation is non-significant difference or it is significant difference and for that purpose you will be calculating chi-square that aspect I have already explained in case of uh, uh, 
uh, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium testing. So, hope that this much information will help you to understand how calculations are done when uh, two alleles are there for a single locus. Now, I am going to take up another example. Uh, in this case, what we observed, suppose in a particular population, there are tall and short plants. I have not written here plants, but suppose it is a case of uh, garden pea. Uh, you people have already studied about uh, Mendelian laws of inheritance, particularly uh, the uh, law of segregation. You know that in uh, F2 generation, tall and short plants are found. Those plants which are tall, they could be homozygous, uh, capital TT, or they could be heterozygous. But I am simply considering a population. I am not considering that specific experiment. Suppose you have garden pea plants grown in a particular area and these plants are tall in their phenotype as well as short in their phenotype. So you have both kinds of plants and those uh, means it is a randomly mating population. Suppose it is a population uh, which has tall as well as short plants and they show random mating and uh, those plants which will be tall uh, genotypically they will be capital T T or they will be capital T small t means both types of uh, genotype will be present but short individuals they have they will have genotype small t small t so you can say that here again capital T T will be represented by p square heterozygotes by 2 p q and homozygous recessive by q v square now you uh, actually observe such individuals from a population and you found that 704 individuals are there uh, which are tall in their phenotype and 296 are there uh, which are short. Total comes 1000. So the number of tall and short plants are given. Total that comes 1000. Now you have to first calculate in this particular case if there is a question how to uh, find out the frequency of capital T and small t, then what method will be applied? Because it is a different situation. You do not have uh, the number of heterozygotes present in the population. Heterozygotes, they are added up with the homozygous dominant. So here, completely a different method will be employed. And let us see how we can solve this case. If we have to find out the frequency of capital T and small t, then what method we shall be adopting. You see, first we shall be calculating the frequency of these two types. So 704 plants out of 1000 are tall. It means the frequency comes 0 0.704. So this is the frequency. Likewise, the short plants, their frequency will be 296 divided by 1000. This figure comes 0.296. And the total will definitely be 1. Okay, So frequency you will be obtaining by uh, dividing the number of individuals of a particular phenotype by the total number of cases observed or total number of individuals. So once you have these two cases, what we can do, we know that Q square, Q square is equal to 0.296. So here you have Q square that is equal to 0 0.296. So Q will be equal to a square root of this value 0 0.296 and it comes 0 0.54. So we know that uh, if the frequency of one allele that is a small t which is represented by Q is 0 0.54, then the frequency of other allele that is capital T which will be represented or which is represented by small p will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.54 and that value comes 0 0.46. So in such case, the frequency of one allele that is capital T that is 0 0.46 and uh, uh, this is small t is 0 0.54. Now you may think that here the uh, number of sharp plants they are quite less, they are just 296. But the frequency of T is coming more than uh, this uh, capital T. It is only because 
in this particular case the number of heterozygotes will definitely be more and because of uh, because heterozygotes they carry you know a small t also so uh, that is why the frequency of this uh, small t is higher than the capital t so this is the method if you have only two types and if you don't know the genotype of those uh, individuals then you can uh, calculate the frequency of uh, recessive allele by taking uh, those individuals which show a recessive uh, inheritance pattern